welcome to the labyrinth i am your host pratham padu if you would like to support my podcast buy my t-shirt link is in the description my guest today is madhusudan raj he is an assistant professor of economics and he teaches austrian economics at the department of human resources development at veer narmad south gujarat university he also has his own institute called mycis india i have put certain links in the description these links contain madhusudan raj's articles and his blog do check them out especially if you're interested in austrian economics and anarcho capitalism okay madhusudan welcome to the labyrinth how are you doing i'm doing fine thank you pratham for inviting me to your show labyrinth so thanks you thanks so how do you feel about the direction in which this country is going right now <laughs> how do i feel okay there are you know from the personal personal perspective i feel whatever is happening is uh, for good uh, why because you have to understand from which position i come to i am basically an anarcho capitalist so i believe in complete freedom and for that i believe that the nation state must be disintegrated because the centralized power is the problem that is what is you know not allowing individuals to live their life properly we have too much of centralization of power so i believe that uh, we will see you know we will discuss about the economy in a while so when indian economy and other things are slowing down and performing very you know badly the center is going to become weak and that means uh, individual state will have i guess more power in future because uh, and then i don't know maybe india will disintegrate also because when you have internal weaknesses when your performance on economic front is not very good when you don't have resources what is going to happen is the nation state basically will disintegrate now i cannot discuss everything about the nation state what it is how it is formed what it is not what are its strength and what are its weaknesses the basic performance should be economic performance and as economies are dis- you know uh, slowing down uh, country will be nation state will be country is a different concept nation state will probably disintegrate i cannot give you the time frame but that is the it looks like that is the future of this country and once that happens individual states can go on its own and do better if the population of that state is you know hard working and more productive local government can be different then what can happen is people like these cities and these states they can have smaller states they can have more opportunities to grow and develop faster than what the whole nation state is doing right now so for example i am from gujarat and gujarat i'm from surat city in gujarat it has a lot of potential it's an, it has it has been an entrepreneurial city since long it was actually established by a businessman not by some uh, conqueror uh, gopi said his name is and surat has a lot of potential to grow very fast but what happens right now is because a- india is a you know federal you know kind of setup is a central state centralized nation state surat city people cannot make their own policies so we have to follow the dictates of delhi mm. i'm sure the same is true for cities like mumbai or other cities you know where like gujarat maharashtra these are some of the states where population is hard working and they can do well there can be other smaller places let's say in uttar pradesh there i don't know much about the uttar pradesh uh, demography and everything but i'm sure there are some places in that area big area who can do well once the grip of central government becomes loose so from my perspective my personal perspective that is what i am seeing right and from the ordinary people's perspective conditions are going to become bad and economic performance is going to deteriorate it is deteriorating mm. if you see policies of the policy disasters right uh, not just mm. the modi government but all successive governments mm. right but with modi government it has really started to go down like demonetization and botched implementation of gst mm. and after that this 
senseless lockdowns in the name of a virus which is not even killing point you know two yeah. percent or zero point two percent of people yeah we'll we'll come back to these policies later but uh, uh-huh. uh i want to say that you know when we when you talk like this to the general public who are conditioned to think that the nation state is good they will uh, mm-hmm. react by saying oh you're an anti national you're this you're that uh, how do you i do react mm-hmm. to such people i don't care see uh, pratham i am an economist and my job is to objectively analyze mm-hmm. economic forces economic social forces that are brewing you know in the country so i am just an observer i am just a messenger if people want to shoot the messenger then that is not going to change the trajectory on which this nation state is so it doesn't really matter to me what people are saying once i see the laws of economics working and they always work uh, and according to those laws the future is not good at all the way everything is going on make in india protectionism is going up not just me even mainstream economists like i have just published one article on my website mises india my institute's website that narendra modi is second jawaharlal nehru so former uh, economic advisor chief economic advisor of narendra modi arvin panagaria uh, he is from columbia university basically he also penned down one article in times of india after resigning from modi administration the first term saying that this is all deja vu this is like we are living all again the nehruvian you know centralization and import substitution mm-hmm. and inward looking policies all this protectionism import duty is going up quotas banning items from china this and that country it's not going to be good and he said that if you're trying to raise revenue i can understand because he's a mainstream economist but he said they are not doing it for that they are doing it to promote the local business people like for example what is the you know purpose of banning steel from china when you have competitors like tata now you don't need tata does not need any protection from the indian government they have to perform well in the steel sector if they cannot just get out yeah. right so even yesterday i was reading in fact i'm going to write one more article i'm in middle of writing that article uh these people are saying that you know india is going to become a fastest economy and uh, just wait what the news is i'm just going to read it to you it says uh, no well i think i don't have it right now missed it but anyway so it was something about that how banning imports and everything is going to benefit india make in india and all, all that it's not going to really because if you don't import things from china the cost of production in india is going to increase that's not going to create any jobs actually it's going to destroy jobs and everything it's a it's some complicated you know logic people don't understand uh so i don't care what people say mm-hmm. right i i am an economist and i see what is happening and i always speak my mind i have always spoken my mind and it's up to the people if they want to take me seriously or not because whether they like it or not what is happening is happening and what is going to happen is going to happen denial is not going to stop the truth form you know for um, working mm-hmm. on its own so truth will stand on its own okay. and so i really don't care what public is going to say anti national whatever who cares mm-hmm. yeah. i am not anti national i am the one who is worried about my country very much i am a you know i'm a proud indian i love my country not the nation state <laughs> nation state is an organization which is you know in which name people rule the politicians bureaucrats and all these people parasitical class of our society they rule over us from uh, delhi or whatever the center is gandhinagar in gujarat for example i i am against that not against my country you know i am worried and i'm writing all these things because i'm worried about my countrymen Mm-hmm. now if my countrymen cannot see the facts and the truth then what can i do to that i'm i'm just a messenger and yeah. if they want to shoot the messenger then it's not going to change okay their condition at all so once we get rid 
not us, but uh, eventually, or uh, as some of your theories suggest, the Republic of India will even may eventually disintegrate or may get decentralized. What do you think mm. will start sprouting after that? Will Gujarat or will Surat have a minarchist uh, small government, or do you oh. think? Uh, <laughs> do you think there will? It be depends else? on. Sorry, yeah, it depends on the kind of population and local culture you have in different areas of this. our uh, country surat definitely has lot a lot of potential going the market way we already have uh, you know market in this city diamond and textile market and people are more commercially oriented than politically oriented i agree that in last 15 years of uh, this uh, bjp reign people have been polarized in this state a lot and but still you know deep in their heart they don't really care for politics what they care for is their businesses so as the businesses are getting i think once they will wake up from this uh you know opm of nationalism uh that is being you know fed to them they will realize that it is not going to feed their children or their families it is not going to give them anything and they will you know uh, once the central government is gone i feel like places like surat for example for sure will go the market way i don't know about the other places it can be anything it can in fact my very dear friend jain bandari and i believe that it will be a very chaotic situation uh you know probably local gangs will take over or we don't know it depends on the culture of local population i don't see that happening but ultimately what happens is we human beings are uh we have a tendency to cooperate so after initial chaos things will start to settle down but even if you see history and theory wherever you have decentralized governments like smaller smaller independent principalities progress always takes place because small you know government small place cannot become very powerful and become very oppressive authoritarian like what is happening right now so yes. and we can have a you know a democracy can work in a better way if the population is small original greek city states like athens who actually started democracies the word you know comes from you know greeks and they had a very small population a free population and they used to keep an eye on their administrator you are close to your rulers rulers in the sense the administrators ruler are the people you can observe what they are doing and you can punish them if they are not doing the job right now a common man in a democracy like people are masters we cannot even go and meet our servants government servants like politicians they behave as if they are our masters and they talk about democracy and everything so the chances of that happening in a smaller place will be less so i don't know about other places but i definitely know that surat probability is pretty high that these kind of places where businesses you know right now flourishing they will go actually the market way and yeah. what will happen is they will attract good people into their territories like what is happening surat is a city of migrant population we have people from all the states of india right now and they everybody peacefully do business and everything mm. nobody is you know too much into politics yeah. politics is into, into north mm. like uttar pradesh and bihar and all this this one state uttar pradesh just dominates all election without mm. any reason yeah we can That's... discuss about political changes later on yeah. if people want to know about the reforms which i don't believe in but mm. there there is a lot of scope for doing those reforms also like we can you know institute a republican like i mean a system electoral college system like america where a smaller state gets more votes instead of its size like for in america if iowa is a very small but it has more electoral college votes which decides who is going to become president so that's mm-hmm. the reason why politicians focus on iowa more than california yeah. california is a big state but they have few electoral college votes so in india also we can have like uttar pradesh should have instead of 90 seats just 9 seats because they are huge mm-hmm. they should not single handedly influence the whole you know result of the election so political parties only focus on this few bigger states like uttar pradesh bihar madhya pradesh dan what about mizoram what about manipur what about goa what about smaller states in south you know they don't get any attention because they don't have any say 
in those four, you know, 554 or whatever Lok Sabha seats that we have. So mm -hmm. maybe we can start with that if some status people want some kind of changes, some of your audience who thinks that, no, oh, dismantling nation state is not good, then okay, let's start with these kind of reforms at least in electoral system of this country. Why Uttar Pradesh and Bihar and Madhya Pradesh only decide everything? Why not Gujarat, which is, you know, or Maharashtra, which is, you know, highly economic performance state. Mm -hmm. So let's say that those who are putting more revenue into central fund, they should be, you know, having, yeah. you know, bigger say in deciding who is going to become prime minister or not. And not mm -hmm. just because you are, uh, you know, 10 crore, that's why you decide you have 90 Lok Sabha seat and you decide mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, that makes why sense. Why all the prime minister? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So let's start with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, one uh, concern that I have with uh, anarcho-capitalism in India, as you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, uh, earlier about Jayant Bandari, uh, Jayant mm -hmm. Bandari also says that Indians are quite uncivilized people. We are arrogant. We don't follow the rules. We don't have a good culture. We, you know, cut the queues. We uh, bribe, and it's there's so much uh, problems in India. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, even though I'm an anarchist at heart, I sometimes feel like if we get rid of government, even if we get rid of government, we will still need governance. We will still need institutions. Otherwise, you know, all these people, these local rowdies, hafta collectors, mafia people, they may take over and they may create new kind of problems and that might have un unintended consequences. No, I mean... Uh... Anarcho-capitalism does not mean any kind of no governance. We will have government. See, I'm not using the word government deliberately. I'm using the word nation state. Uh -huh. Both these things are different. Okay, nation state is a centralized power. We will have government, but our own voluntary local government, mm -hmm. right? And in anarcho-capitalist society, you know, which is basically, let me use the better word which Hans Herman Hape uses, a private law society. We will have, in fact, more stricter laws and more stricter punishment and better security and better solution of every problem that we have. Okay. Uh, but as I'm saying, and Jayant is also not, he will not make a blanket statement. If you go deeper with him, if you ask him, he will say, no, places like Gujarat or places like Maharashtra or some places in South, for example, they have better you know, probability of doing well. Some places will be taken over by these kind of people, but not all places. And then when these places start, and when we have competition, we don't have political competition in this country, right? In, like, let's say for in America, states are separate. So if California is instituting horrible policies, Californians will move to Texas. Over here, we don't have anything like that. GST... Center is so strong, everything coming from center. So mm -hmm. everything implementation is at the national level. Now, that, that means we don't have any choices. I cannot go from Gujarat to Maharashtra. There is little competition, very little, because everything is coming from the center now, especially with this government, it's heavy centralization of everything. So for example, Gujarat cannot decide something different and attract more people and do well and become kind of a role model for everybody else. That possibilities will be there when we are going to, you know, have a decentralized, you know, a country, disintegrated country. So anarcho-capitalism does not mean that we are not going to have any kind of government. We will have a voluntary government. We will have a private law society if people decide to go along that road. And as I said, the probability of that is different in different places. We have to do a disintegrated analysis. We can't you know, uh, paint everybody with a broad brush at, at this position. Uh, another... But it will be better than it will be better than what we have today for sure. Yeah. Whatever it will be, I at think... least you have yeah. a chance to do something different. Yeah. You know, we need to do something different. This is going on since last seventy-five years. I think it is high time that something else we think about. I have written one more article that. Instead of starting this party and that party, let's start a political party, youngsters like you and other people, me, you know, no tax party. Our platform will be zero taxation. And then let's see voters, what they're going to do. I mean, it's a very attractive platform for most people. Because mm -hmm. see, Indians are all hypocrite because on face, everybody is nation, this, that. But when it comes to paying for the development of nation, 
everybody is trying to you know run away from paying taxes i am actually a taxpayer because i work in the university i don't have other choice but to pay my taxes because they cut before they give me so i am actually a taxpayer a very so called honest taxpayer okay so i am actually contributing in the development of this country all these people who talk about it they are just talking about it how many of them are actually paying this their taxes somebody like amitabh bachchan or sachin tendulkar they will talk about when but when the leaks come out we know that they are you know shifting their investment from india to for example panama or they are having some kind of shadow company going on somewhere so what i'm saying is let's start with this kind of a political party where the only platform is we are going to remove all taxation because remember the nation state survives on the basis of taxation that's their achilles heel that's their weakness now you attack that system on that point and it will really create huge ripples so some youngsters if they come together and start something like no no tax political party our platform is only one we are not you know promising anything no policy complicated we will immediately abolish all the taxes that's can uh, you see what happens let's hmm. see <laughs> that sounds so, very attractive but i don't know like in i i would vote for no tax party definitely but indians are so <laughs> illogical if some guy says uh, no taxes no one will listen if another guy says jai shri ram or if he says ah oh, pakistan pakistan they'll vote for him whatever it is if people and then if people are not voting for that party then mm. they deserve whatever is happening with them mm. at least they will not have any reason to say that there was no one to tell us that how to improve our condition here we mm. are discussing telling them this is what is needed if you don't want to do it then well then what can we do what is your opinion on these uh, other political alternatives like uh, right to recall party and uh, sanjeev sabloks uh, swarna bharat party no, no 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 they are just playing in the same 3 by 5 card of allowable opinion trying to tinker here and trying to tinker there that's not going to help us as i said it has to be completely challenged and dismantled actually no tax platform is basically dismantling the nation state mm. in a way if you don't have revenue what are they going to do right so they will have to withdraw from everywhere so indirect way of attacking all these things this is what and it's it's also very attractive and as i said if people don't vote for this party then fine then deserve mm. you deserve what is happening with you please don't complain then whatever is happening with you then accept that that is your fate for example so i feel like we need some kind of really radical experimentation you know in the political arena also especially the youngsters who are frustrated with everything someone like you because believe me politics is not the answer of anything politicians are never going to solve any problems impossible because they are politicians by definition career politicians it's their you know lifelong bread and butter and they are not going to destroy a system which is giving them livelihood parasitical survival okay so in one way or another way they will find a way of you know robbing us and killing us and murdering us so that is the reason why we have to attack that system at its root and that is why i'm saying let's start no tax political party let's see what happens you what know, is wrong in hmm. trying <laughs> there is you know there's one part of me that's very radical that's like you know, you know get rid of the system no tax but then there's another part of me that's more uh, pragmatic it to ask questions like but is this possible should we instead look at more practical options now in the national elections uh, in the central government elections i voted twice in 2014 and 2019 i voted and i voted for the lesser of two evils not bjp the other yeah. party but in the upcoming mm-hmm. national elections i'm considering not voting at all i'm considering boycotting elections and democracy because i think mm-hmm. my uh, previous uh, uh, exercise of voting for the lesser of two evils is very inefficient because it doesn't work i've seen it fail <laughs> because i voted for lesser of two evils and i don't even if that lesser of two evils win it's not going to make that much difference what is your opinion should we vote or should we not vote okay uh, personally i have never voted in my life because i never found any good option and i don't believe in choosing between lesser evil i believe in choosing the good and the good is available 
and which is away from the present system right so my whole life is dedicated to achieve that good for this country and for this world i am not going to compromise on my morals and my principles right and i don't care about practicality if something is wrong you should be opposing on the moral ground it should be opposed on the ground of right and wrong as i as i have returned in my that article you know radical approach radical political you know alternative you know it's beyond time now we start doing the right thing instead of discussing what is the practical issue so what if it is not practical who knows what is in the future at least let's do the right thing okay instead of supporting this evil system continuously let's you know kick it out and do what is the right thing at least once in the lifetime then we will see what happens right it's just you know because if you keep on thinking like that the system will perpetuate yeah. right and ultimately what will happen is frustration like what happened with you i realized at a very early young age that none of these guys deserve any of the voting and the whole system is all same sham and i don't want to you know be participant of any of this you know wrong thing so i have never voted in my whole life on that day actually i sit down and i read some good book by rothbard or spooner or something like that <laughs> on the day of election <laughs> and i teach my students you know that you should be utilizing the time for understanding you know economics and other history and political science so that we can do the right thing for this country i think it is a high time we start thinking about the right things you know doing the right thing instead of just doing cost benefit analysis that's what indians do all the time right cost benefit analysis you know world is not going to improve based on cost benefit analysis we have to decide on what is right and what is wrong which is basically ethical principles morality so that is what is required so i have never voted i know and i think and not only not voted i i i try to give you know people the alternative because i just don't want to criticize and just shut down because people want to know what alternatives are there i am not saying go completely anarcho capitalist that's not possible let's start by cutting all this bureaucracies of the government how about that yeah. rolling back the state is what is required i am not i am not for minimum government i am saying roll it back if the tentacles are why the let's start cutting one tentacle after another of this leviathan okay so education department gone health department gone okay everything gone one after another and then everybody will realize that well we can live our life happily without all these things <laughs> you know people yeah. will know that oh if the government is state is not there we can build our roads we don't need the state to build our roads nobody will then ask who will build the roads hmm. you know today i was uh, in university with my wife and she was asked she is also an anarcho capitalist and she was asking me about who will provide the security if there is no government so i actually took her out of the campus and i went to meet uh, the private security guard that guards our university and i called him i said come here tell me for who you work he said i work for a private security company called shakti and they are the ones who are paying my salary i said so here is your answer even in today's present condition it's not the government that is protecting us it is this private security company that is protecting us and then i then i asked him that when do you see policemen in campus he said when politicians come for some program mm. <laughs> so the policemen are only protecting the politicians the people who give them salary so i'm saying then what is the need of having a police you know force what are they good for you know they take salary from our tax money they are not protecting us they are protecting the politicians they are not protecting us right you know banks when they transfer money from one atm to another they don't send police inspectors they hire the private security company if you go to a mall you know in your city for example who is protecting the mall the private, private security company mm -hmm. so the market is already doing all that work mm -hmm. right what is the need i'm um, you just have to open your eyes and see observe right so if if they can and who is building all these bridges and road not the government private companies who are given contracts by the government bureaucrats and politicians through their favorites 
Yeah. So you just take out this, you know, agents from in between, and we can directly hire L and T or whoever is. I can hire you. You can start your road construction company. I can hire you to build road for me. And because these are private companies competing in the market, the road quality and the prices of you know toll and everything will be very low. So today we pay taxes also, we pay tolls also, and what we are ending up is horrible roads and highways. You know, every year you know that in India, one point five. Lack people die on roads. India is number one in terms of road accident deaths. Why? Nobody is questioning who is the owner of all these roads. Okay. Government. They are responsible. Half a million people, you know, are very badly injured and disabled for whole their life in road accidents in this country. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. A privatizing role will immediately stop all this thing. In the sense, lessen the number. I am not saying nobody will die on a private road. But surely not 1.5 lakh people. Yeah. It can be 1,500 people or 15,000 people. Even if it is going to result into one less death, that is an improvement over this present system. Yeah. Because the right thing is to save one life. So yeah. let's do the right thing and say goodbye to the state and bring in the private, you know, enterprise system. So we are building roads. And you know, one day I was going in a bus long time ago. And I saw the toll booth coming, and there were huge billboards. They say these are the people who are exempted from paying taxes, toll, mm. politicians, bureaucrats, judges, all state officials, mm. right? None of them are paying anything. We are paying taxes. We are paying tolls. The cost of building the roads is already very high. Quality is worst, and still people say who is going to build the road? We can use much less money. to build much better road if we don't have this government we you know we are capable of hiring a good company to build road for ourselves we don't need the politicians for doing that absolutely yeah do people yeah do people need politicians to survive and live their life no <laughs> <laughs> you know that's true and uh, for me uh, this thing was slightly obvious but it became very evident not just for me but for millions of young people who became uh, awakened during this uh, whole covid circus <laughs> what is your uh, opinion on how india has dealt with this uh, covid circus with all their lockdowns and their mandates and all that nonsense <laughs> uh, sorryble you know i have written many articles on that i told you that it's not covid that is responsible for all this destruction of the economy and society it's this senseless lockdowns implemented by the central government without thinking i mean when they implemented nationwide lockdown maybe mm. three four states were experiencing some cases mm. northeast for example meghalaya manipur tripura you know arunachal they had zero cases what was the need of locking down everyone mm. and then after after modi experience he saw that it's creating a lot of damage to the economy he pulled out and now he's saying states will decide then then you should have done that from the beginning itself let the state governments decide but then and now he is blaming congress for that also i mean <laughs> what congress has to do with that your government is in power since last 7 8 years now why well, what congress has to do with that but that is their game you know when congress will be in power they'll say bjp is doing this or aam aadmi party is doing this when aam aadmi will be in, they will keep on playing this game and in that they will continue to rob and kill us all these political parties so the lockdowns were completely unnecessary now at, even at the international level now studies after studies are coming out and saying that they are harmful even john hopkins university studies now saying that lockdowns are unnecessary and they are more harmful than any beneficial and according to their estimates it reduced the death rate by mere 0.2% and and compared to that so many other people suffered died because of other diseases and so much discrimination going on around the world in the name of covid this vaccine mandates and not treating the pay i mean as if the unvaccinated people are second class citizen right i know in mumbai they were saying that if you are unvaccinated you cannot ride trains you cannot go to mall i mean is our government creating two tiers of you know citizens right this is worse than hitler i guess and people are not saying anything about but now you can see protests are erupting all over the world especially in canada what the truckers are doing yeah so they so and in america also there is some sense left so the supreme court 
American Supreme Court said that these vaccine mandates are all unconstitutional. They just knocked it down. And over there, more states like Texas and Florida, South Dakota, they said we are not going to implement any of this thing. It's just a virus. It's just a cold and cough virus. I mean, let mm. me give you a number very quickly. You know, how, how, what, are, what is the total number of COVID cases, so-called COVID cases? Let's not discuss all the fraud, RT-PCR tests and everything. Okay. The Center for Disease Control, CDC in America has stopped using RT-PCR from 31st December 2021 because they said it gives more false positive than actually positive cases. The guy who invented this RT-PCR test, right, he himself said, Kerry is that this test is not for diagnosis purpose. It is just to create more viruses in the lab for experimentation, right? But who listens to, you know, people like Kerry Mullis or, you know, right? even the inventor of mRNA vaccine technology, Dr. Robert Malone, is now sounding alarm bells and he's been banned from YouTube and Twitter and everything. So Indian government is right now completely captured by these globalist powers. I have interviewed Johan, you know, on how this public health of India is all corrupted and all these people who are benefiting from this lockdown and COVID, they are the ones who are sitting into powerful position deciding everything. Uh, your viewers can watch that interview of mine with Yohan Tenga. Yohan has done wonderful work in, you know, kind of uh, finding out, investigating all these connections between people and everything. So it was totally unnecessary, right? It's absolutely against natural human rights and it should stop immediately. All this, what we call COVID EOC, right? COVID EOC should stop immediately. It's just a virus. Take it as a virus, right? It's not even deadly. And it, they should have allowed, they should have never implemented. But what the prime minister wanted to do was he wanted to show as if he can defeat the virus also. And he, you know, as usual, like any other politician, he wanted to, you know, take all the credit of saving India from the disaster. But then, of course, virus is a virus. Virus is not going to listen to the prime minister. Virus is doing its own thing. And then he realized that this is a virus. We cannot control it. So now they say, we don't know anything. You decide. They are just issuing some kind of suggestion and this and that. Okay. So by and large, as I said, it's now over, but we lost two years of our precious time. Kids lost their school. I mean, I did not understand why they shut down schools and everything because kids are taking this virus very nicely. The mortality rate in that age group is you know, almost zero. Nobody's dying because of COVID in that group. Right. So there, there was no need, but now it has become some kind of, you know, politicians have realized that people are not saying anything. So something happens, shut down the school, shut down the colleges, shut down gym. What is the need of closing down gymnasium? People are going there and walking out and staying healthy. I tell you what, at the local, you know, at the micro level. Now, for example, to keep your good health, we take supplements, right? Because our modern food does not give us all nutrients. So I used to take supplements like vitamin D or, you know, fish oil, omega-3 and everything. So these supplements, they come from abroad, you know, good quality. So Indian government, when COVID was going on, instead of reducing the import duty on the supplements, right? They increase the duty. They double the duty from 40% to some 80%. So the government does not want you to have this supplement and improve your life, right? Make yourself healthy. A healthy body is going to fight any kind of infection. How lockdown or wearing mask or all, all these things are going to help. It's completely mindless. And all this stupidity should stop immediately. I think Canadian truckers had enough of it and now they are just doing whatever is needed. Right? And yeah. I think we should do the same thing. Indian government has realized because the economy tank and it, the growth rate in that quarter was like minus 23% or something like that. <laughs> And they realized that this is really going to damage everything. So they immediately, you know, started going back. So I think overall, it's a complete disaster, like any other political, you know, uh, action, political, I think they don't know what is going on at the ground level. Yeah. The political class and even the bureaucratic class, even I'm from here, I'm from Mangalore in Karnataka. 
right so even mm. here I, i haven't taken the vaccine because I, i don't need it i'm healthy and i'm young mm. i i belong to the statistical mm. group that is not affected by covid at all yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, I, we started a small group here we went to the city's uh, corporation commissioner we told we gave them all scientific evidence as to why we don't need the vaccine but you are not allowing us to malls and theaters this doesn't make sense it's unconstitutional unscientific and finally he gave up and you know he made one statement that is very typical you will hear this from bureaucrats all the time our hands are tied we are getting orders from mm-hmm. top we have to follow this yeah. now get out of the office that's what they say <laughs> yeah It's... yeah but that's what is the danger of having a centralized state basically mm. the local people even if they understand they cannot follow their own policy they cannot frame their own policies yeah. right yeah. if there is political competition let's say mangalore can say we are not instituting anything like in usa mm. texas florida south dakota nothing no mask mandates no vaccine mandates in fact the governor of florida desantis is heavily against all this thing he appointed uh, they don't know uh, a doctor chief doctor who is against all this nonsense and they are saying we should not be you know fear should not be the base of making public policy that's what these people are doing right now scaring everyone threatening everyone right and then see remember bureaucrats and politicians all these people who support lockdowns they will not understand because their salaries continued even during the lockdown right yeah. everybody who is supporting they did not get the pay cut so they are not feeling any kind of pinch of what happens when your business is closing down for one day or two day when you don't have enough money to feed yourself mm-hmm. right 50% or more business in surat is completely finished right only big people are surviving so this government is actually creating more and more monopoly now which mm-hmm. is not good for the country look at the telecom sector now only two players are there vodafone is almost taken over by the government now with whatever 41 43% of equity share so birla pulled out and they harassed them a lot so what are we going to have just one telephone company jio and ambani is going to charge a bomb to everyone monopoly is known for two things only high prices and worst quality services so we only have two companies now auto sector also one after the other company is getting out so this make in india is just going to you know make poverty in this country and unemployment and nothing else and very high inflation yeah hmm. this uh, lockdown was terrible government policy but Uh, if you go a little bit uh, back uh, a f- few years uh, you know if you go back we a similar uh, thing happened in 2016 that is demonetization i think that was the first time that i saw a uh, prime minister take such a radical step that uh, was so arrogant and it did so much damage uh, how how did you react uh, during that time oh immediately see i was watching television and it and i was not watching the news channel something and then people started running out in my apartment i was like what happened so i went out and i see everybody is rushing to bank and everything and i started what happened i told my dad what happened so we started television and narendra modi is talking about all this thing and i immediately that very night i recorded my video in which i just say that this is going to be a complete disaster because you cannot cannot discontinue money like that which is like 85% of total money supply of this country at that time right it, money is i mean if i have to use a very loose kind of you know uh, analogy money is like life blood it 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 keeps the whole you know economy greased it makes transaction exchange possible you take out that medium of common medium of you know exchange and you destroy the exchanges and the economies and the market and everything it's just going to create chaos so i immediately discuss all those things and immediately we started saying what 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 happened it was i mean i don't know who told him to do this thing i'm sure the globalist power who you know somebody like kenneth rock of internationally they are you know the status people are discussing cashless economy since long and now we are moving in that direction slowly with this digital currency of rbi and imposing 30% taxes on cryptocurrency like bitcoin and everything so what they want is they want cashless economy and cashless economy is 
total control of our lives. So once they have our, our money into their hands, they can just shut us up anytime. Like, for example, if I am speaking anything against, you know, government, for example, I'm speaking truth, not against or for anyone. But if they think that I am going to be a dangerous person or somebody who is allowing people to think critically, they will say, okay, we are going to shut your bank account and we are going to confiscate all your money. And what are you going to do now? So any kind of political dissident, dissident, you know, dissent or anything is going to become very difficult if this RBS digital currency is going to be there. And I am seeing that although we still have a lot of cash circulation, but that's what the powers to be are trying right now. So demonetization was a completely disaster policy. I mean, completely mindless, senseless. I don't know who told him to do all these things. I hear the name of accountant from Pune, Anil Bokal, that he was, or somebody said Ramdev Baba was also talking about. But I mean, only prime minister like this can do such things. I mean, I'm sure it was a globalist experiment that what happens when you suddenly cancel the currency of any economy. So overall, it was total disaster. We are still feeling the effects of all those things. Right. And what it accomplished? Absolutely nothing. They, they themselves kept on changing the goalposts. I remember they said it is for black money. It is for reducing terrorism. I don't know how that is going to reduce terrorism. Right. And it was for taxation purposes or something like that. None of those three criteria were met. You know, terrorism is in fact rising right now. Okay. Uh, all the cash is again in the economy. There, is, we nobody is talking about black money, Swiss bank account now. Everybody forgot everything. There is no fifteen lakh in anybody's account. It's all forgot. People have very short term memories. You know, politicians know how to manipulate people psychologically. They hire, you know, basically professionals to do that. See, for example, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he's not a self made person. There is a whole team of marketing people working behind him, like Barack Obama, for example, or Joseph Biden right now in America. These people, if you put them on their own, they cannot you know, say a word on their own. It's all a show. It's basically a manipulation game. It's basically PR, as Edward Bernays wrote in his famous book, Propaganda, right? He was a nephew of uh, Sigmund Freud, psychoanalysis you know, uh, expert. Uh, inventor of that method and he was the one who was behind all this kind of propaganda you should read you know everybody should read that book by edward bernese propaganda and you know that how they manipulate the people their mind you know i i know every year they bring one or the other virus sometime it is swine flu sometime it is zika sometime it is bird flu but this time around you know covid was very successful in spooking the people because of this use of mobile and social media. I remember back when, you know, mobiles were not there. They were still trying with Mars and SARS and all those, right? Uh, but with this social media all around, I think that is the reason why Facebook was also started by the US military and CIA. If you go in details, then these people are funded and started by them. So they were planning all these things, you know, way ahead of time. Johan will you know, tell you about all these things, you know, in details because he is a conspiracy researcher. And remember, all these conspiracy theories are actually conspiracy facts, right? Uh, just because people, and the word itself, conspiracy theories is coined by the status people, government who want to basically discredit the people who are questioning the government, the state, who are making people think critically. So it was a disaster. All these policies, GST, demonetization, and everything. Nothing happened, just damage yeah. for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, I agree with you. See, with I, the... Okay, uh, uh, yeah, just one more point I want to make very quickly. <clears throat> it's very ironic. And one side, let's, let's say that, let's give benefit of doubt to Narendra Modi and say that he is really serious about making India a great country. Let's Let's give him a benefit of doubt and agree that he actually is a passionate man. He is true to his heart. He has nothing but good for the you know, Indians. <clears throat> Even then, he has to follow the right policies. Right? Like Mahatma Gandhi, for example. Ga now, nobody can question the intentions of Gandhi. Right? That he wanted power or this or that. Nobody can question that at least. But 
his ideology, his policy of supporting socialism was wrong, which basically gave a false start to this country in 1947. Okay. So if those people believed in market and capitalism, India would have been a completely different country by now. So even if Narendra Modi is serious and people, all these nationalist people are serious for making India a superpower, this is not the way to make India a superpower. This is actually going to make, you know, make India a very poor country. And remember, a poor country cannot defend itself from its enemies. So right yeah. now, if I am Pakistani prime minister or Chinese premier, I am not going to worry about India because India is destroying itself. I am just going to sit on the border and see the show. Take popcorn and just enjoy that how these people are destroying themselves. You follow the right policy. Why America could become superpower? Because they had internal free markets. They generated so much of wealth. Because remember, to win war territories, you require resources. Resources can only be generated by a market capitalist economy so, you know, system. Socialism is never going to give you the resources that are required to become a superpower. A poor country cannot defend itself. A poor country cannot become a superpower. Nirmala Sitaraman in the present budget, he was, he was saying, India is going to become the fastest growing economy. And I was laughing. And actually, I'm writing one article. You know, India's per capita income is something like 2,000 US dollars. America's mm -hmm. per capita income is 65,000 US dollars. Now, what fastest growing economy? Right? It's Even if it is, I mean, your size itself is this small. Even if you grow at 100%, you're not going to become this big, which is America or China. Right? America and China, they are like 30% of the world economy right now. And you are not even 2% or 1%. How are you going to compete with them? They're talking about all this can fool the local public. Right? Gullible Indians, voters. But it is not going to change the fact that India is a poor country, third world, fourth world country. And it is not going to improve unless we start, first of all, accepting that there is so many, so many wrong things with this country. Yeah, and absolutely. then we start working on that. Mm. Okay. So these kind of policies of damaging your own country is counterproductive. Even if Narendra Modi is honest, let's say, these are, this is not the right way of making India a superpower. This is absolutely wrong, opposite way of making it. This is not going to make India a superpower. It's going to destroy this country. Mm. Again, yeah. I am talking from an objective perspective, right? I don't mind if India becomes superpower, right? But this is not the way in which it is going to become superpower. That is for sure. That I know for sure, yeah. right? And Anybody uh, who will study basic economics will know these things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one one more thing I think uh, that a lot of us learned during demonetization is that government should not have a monopoly on printing currencies. And but that government should, yeah. should not have a monopoly on printing currencies. Right now, they have a monopoly on that. And uh, that monopoly is slowly being snatched away because of uh, cryptocurrencies. So, uh, what do you think of the emerging uh, uh, nature of uh, cryptocurrencies? I support any alternative that is coming up in the market, which is challenging the monopoly currency of any government, right? Now, whether that is viable or not, that is not for me to decide. We are saying that many governments around the world are trying to hijack cryptocurrency. That is what my worry is right now. That Bitcoin, they will remove it and then like RBI is bringing its own digital currency, right? So if they do that and they will impose this 30% tax now like gold on Bitcoin also, right? So it's a good thing that we are trying to create alternative right? Making awareness. But then, as I said, we have to also understand that whether Bitcoin is going to do this thing or not. Something that cannot be controlled by the government. We need that thing. And I have always believed that it's, it's basically we have to go from gold and silver and stuff like that. Start at the local level. Okay? Something that government can, you know, just switch off your currency, you know, electricity, power, whatever, and they can just completely stop all this transaction. That, that can be dangerous. But overall, I support the whole movement, right? Because especially the youngsters. But what I'm seeing is Bitcoin, instead of becoming an alternative viable currency competing against government's monopoly currency, it has only become a speculative vehicle. 
most indians or most people go into that not because of this ideological position that they have that okay i am going to support bitcoin because it is going to give me more freedom okay it is going to dismantle the government monopoly on currency money most people don't do that they don't even know about that over here everybody is like okay the price is going up that's why i'm going to bet on that it's speculation that is not going to solve the purpose with which bitcoin actually started i don't know 11 12 years ago i i have been following bitcoin since its inception satoshi nakamoto and all that because in our austrian circle we are always keeping an eye on what alternatives are coming up in the market to provide basically recourse to people that they can go away from the fake monopoly right anyway so bitcoin is a good thing but it is just a speculative vehicle right now and that is not going to help i think uh, can libertarianism or anarcho capitalism save india save india yeah. <laughs> i again see india is a very broad concept it's a collective term right these ideas can save any society if they are rightly implemented theoretically speaking okay yeah. but the big question is how that is going to become possible i mean just saying free market free market is not going to help because for free market to come into existence or for libertarianism or capitalist anarcho capitalist societies to come into existence you require that you know that kind of culture those kind of cultural values amidst the population if people like for that's why i said let's float this no tax party see how many people are supporting no tax party and we will come to know how much traction these ideas are going to have in this country it's a very good experiment right let's do a natural random experiment and see and if we find out that these are the people maybe we can take them to one place and start our own country and then we can start competing with all these status people show them that we can do well we can perform well life can go on without the state and maybe then some of them will start to convert so mm. theoretically speaking all these ideas are going to help anyone but how to bring them into existence is the biggest question okay mm. that kind of culture is not available everywhere again as i said in places like surat or maybe mumbai that kind of culture is there more than other places we can only make relative comparison there is nothing good absolute you know in world forget about india there is no heaven but surat is better than baroda or surat is better than let's say some place in uttar pradesh or some place in bihar or madhya pradesh or rajasthan or chennai is better than mangalore for example i don't know right so that can help that can help but that kind of cultural you know value system must be in place first of all before market or capitalism can come into existence because remember historically capitalism came into existence in the western society because they had that culture ready with political dis you know uh, disintegration in europe mm-hmm. and that is how the judeo christian values of hard work and responsibility and all those things these values were present if you don't have these values you cannot have market you cannot have libertarianism you cannot you know what happens as jayant always talks about you bring some concept in india from western society and indians will make something completely different out of that okay so i mean imposing the word liberty in india is not going to help because indians don't understand what liberty is it's not going to work like that copy pasting this is a long long arduous work you know person like you me we have to work at the ground level slowly 1% at a time and maybe we can create a sizable minority which can then start bringing changes you know research says that around 4% of population must be there who believe in some idea and that idea can then take hold we don't even have that 4% minority in this country who understand i mean there are handful of people who understand what liberty is and what markets are and what capitalism is okay so i believe it's an educational job right now so we should be working at the ground level you know explaining individuals and see if something happens in future i don't know 1000 years 10000 years a million year who knows <laughs> but theoretically speaking it definitely will help there is no doubt about that 
if it can be implemented so I, what, ideology idea is not a problem practical implementation is a problem yeah i i think more than trying to change politics we have to change our culture first why yes yes of course yes. Why, why do you think uh, so many indians are blindly obedient and corrupt do you think it's a really it's a result of religion and culture and upbringing oh my god oh. <laughs> okay this will take us into a deeper area see i will tell you very quickly what my studies tell me it has to do with uh, again very broad brush low iq of people and low iq is basically because of the geography that we have now very very broadly speaking if you see the area of tropics you take out any weather map and you see this belt where the heat is always there right around the tropics these places are mostly underdeveloped because over here it's a lot of you know heat which doesn't give a lot of you know energy to brain to function ice is not there life is easy you put something in the ground and it will grow without any kind of hard work so the brain development hasn't to, you know taken place and because low iq is there the culture will not develop because the processing system is not there in fact uh in bangalore researchers have measured they have carried out a survey of the skull size of europeans caucasian race and the east asian race like chinese and other and indian race they found out that on an average indian skull itself is smaller than all these other people so in that small skull your brain size is also small now with that that kind of brain size i mean it's very difficult to understand this higher cultural values like liberty and freedom and all that okay socialism equality and all that comes naturally to us envy to control your envy and to realize that how private property and all these things is going to make life better it requires that higher superior brain which is simply not available indian iq right now i mean 10 years ago was around 82 on an average okay and now it's falling latest number says is 76 so with that iq level and the standard iq level is 100 if you see china japan taiwan south korea singapore all these well performing economies their iq levels are all above 100 right South Korea is number one, for example. Their IQ is like average, hundred and seven. Okay, China hundred and five, Japan hundred and five, hundred and six. They all are performing well. If you actually see a very good correlation, take a world map of IQ and study that. Okay, I know these are controversial issues, but this is what I believe in. We have to understand that the processing itself is not. You know, Indian brain will not grasp all these ideas. i'm a teacher i go in the classroom no matter how much you explain to them they don't understand it because the brain is not capable enough to absorb all these things and they'll be you know like staring at you as if you are just doing something which they really don't understand so for in this kind of situation and i believe low iq can be improved i'm not saying it's given mm. with good nutrition but we don't even have that we don't have good nutrition and that discussion will take me into very controversial territory so i'm not going there <laughs> yeah that's that's another thing If, we are more obsessed with the, you know banning the meat of an animal than uh, actual scientific things yeah. so if your nutrition is going to be there mm -hmm. right then the brain power can improve because iq is not a static thing mm -hmm. if you give proper food to people to children their brain power will improve and then there are chances of cultural changes it's a it's a basically mm -hmm. positive feedback mechanism okay good culture you understand okay food is important mm -hmm. and then you eat good food and it it's a you know virtuous cycle right now it's a vicious cycle basically maybe somebody mm -hmm. from outside will have to come and then do something about india and then the things can restart again i don't see any possibility of that right now who knows when this you know india disintegrates maybe then something will happen we don't know but it comes to this i mean 50% of more adult population of india is malnutrition mm. now how are you going to think because brain requires around 30% of total energy that we are consuming every day if it is not going to get that energy the brain is not going to work 
Mm. And if it is not going to work, it is very difficult to create and develop that kind of culture, which can bring out this kind of civilization. Yeah, yeah. But no, well, these are but nobody is going to talk about all these things. <laughs> now, another uh, political uh, issue that happened recently, uh, which is connected again to India's uh, socialism and the capitalism debate, uh, were those recently scrapped the farm laws. uh some people some libertarians actually supported some libertarians are against it some libertarians are saying maybe these farm laws would have brought more capitalism into our indian agricultural sector but then some libertarians are like no no it's all rubbish it it'll give more it'll create more monopolies in uh, in the hands of ambani and adani what did you think of these farm laws i have written a detailed article on that i will advise you know your readers to go and read that article of mine on so i run my own institute mises india institute mises india dot in so they can read that but you know overall i say that you cannot reform the system like that if you mm. want some kind of improvement in condition of people then the government will have to get out from everything okay over here they were not getting out what they were doing is they were dismantling this but then erecting another you know mm. a system which is still going to allow them to control everything mm. if you have read those two acts i don't remember now them what those acts were then i actually dissected the act itself you know paragraph by paragraph that okay they are not giving anything in remember politicians are not going to give up power voluntarily right and yeah. changing one sector is not going to help it has to be completely removed from all sector only then improvement will come like you say that okay government is not going to be here mm. that's not going to help because it has ripple effect on everything else so, you know economy is a one organic system you can't just tinker here and there and expect changes to take place you have to completely change it from its root and branch otherwise there is no hope for any kind of improvement do you think so in- i was uh- yeah neither in favor of it my position was something completely different yeah yeah do you think india will ever become a libertarian country again let's not talk in terms yeah. of this collective of yeah. india yeah <laughs> sorry sorry yeah, i think <laughs> i have repeated that uh, i uh, we, i think we, i think i have to ask a more uh, i think i have to ask a more precise question do you think uh, parts of india will become a uh, more libertarian or even anarcho capitalist country definitely see again we have to uh, talk in terms of probability because that's what life is life is probabilistic we don't know exactly it is going mm-hmm. chances are for places like as i said surat or other you know where business is you know basically more chances are that these places will you know flourish maybe not in some uh, other areas but in some places definitely and and then it will become a role model for everyone like america became a role model for the world why the why whole world goes to america everybody you know hates america but everybody wants to live in america also <laughs> right so maybe if surat becomes like america of india then everybody will come to surat or mangalore becomes you know america of india then everybody will go to mangalore we need political experimentation this you know this aggregate you know experimentation centralized power is our problem this nation state is our problem and we should keep our eye on fixed on that particular institution everything else is a peripheral issue not really important yeah and uh, finally what do you think we or me as an individual can do to push this country or push this region in a more libertarian direction so you are already doing with this podcast and everything as i always believe it's an educational endeavor we need to tell people about all these things and then hope something will happen i personally don't expect anything i just do the right thing i know that this is the right thing to do without worrying about consequences this somebody will like it or not like it accept it or not accept mm-hmm. i don't care i just do what is the right thing to do so we all should be doing that if we do that with passion right then there are chances of improvement 
at least individuals i have seen you know there are many students who came into my classroom uh flaming status and modi supporters or kejriwal supporters or whatever and after you know one semester they all are like you are right this is all stupid we don't want all this government and everything so i have seen individuals lives changing so that's what we all need to do read more extensively widely educate yourself make sure that your ideas are all completely coherent because if you are confused you are going to confuse everyone like this minimum government people they don't understand what you have to completely understand what liberty is then you can explain to other people so youngsters first job is to dedicate yourself to self study of all this literature that is available i i believe 10 years is minimum required to fully grasp the importance and the significance of all these ideas then you launch yourself in education and never you are doing already that but if you are confused you are going to confuse and you are going to you know actually damage the cause more than helping it so i see the books behind you that is a very good thing just self study read 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 and don't just focus on youtube videos and everything you know many youngsters they come and ask me can you just give me a documentary which will cover everything i said there is no documentary which covers you have to sit down and read this books you have to read human action you have to read manic norm and state you have to read as much as you can in this one life then your whole world view will form and you will know what is where and what is you know needed to be done and what is you know needed to be removed and everything before that don't open your mouth right because as rothbard said if you start expressing your opinion without understanding the subject it's very dangerous so education yeah. educate yourself once you're confident launch yourself become a teacher i wish that youngsters they you know penetrate the academia that is what i've been trying in this country since long i don't know how much successful i am but i'm trying we yeah. need to send this free economy and free minded people into schools and colleges classroom where they will directly you know counteract the status people who are right now teaching and who have hijacked the whole system because that is where the changes are going to come from so become professor become a teacher i am the only one in academia right now who is into austrian economics liberty and all that i want more of you to enter this field right because these are official positions get your phd get your doctorate get qualification so nobody can say eh, who are you you're just a podcaster you don't mm. have any chance right get that do the hard work and then go and oppose these people in conferences and seminar it's an intellectual battle we have to win this battle in that intellectual ground once we do that we have some chance mm. otherwise it's very difficult yeah. okay i i have only started my libertarian journey quite recently i mean just until last year i was working for jp morgan chase which is uh, the exact opposite of libertarianism i mean they are the big of big banks and uh, you know because of covid i was forced I, i i didn't even have a choice but forced to think about libertarianism because suddenly reality itself changed to such an extent that you can't ignore big government anymore it was right on my face i couldn't even say no 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 i'm just going to ignore this it came right on my face and then i was i started uh, studying more started looking into things like uh, uh, looking into people like yohan tengra yourself and jayant bandari so thank you so much madhusudan uh, for inspiring us and for educating us and for coming on this podcast i uh, learned a lot from this uh, one hour conversation with you thank you pratham for inviting me and you know giving me platform to express my ideas as i always believe this is a lifelong journey for you know me and i'm sure for people like you also mm-hmm. so keep on doing the good work that I, that you are doing don't worry about what is going to happen it's going to change or not just do the right thing mm-hmm. once you realize what the truth is hold on to it and spread it without worrying for anything you know at least when you will die you will be like okay i did the right thing what was the impact in that not history will decide we don't you know i don't care you should also not care about all those things mm-hmm. so thank you very much for inviting me on your show and you know uh, allowing me to express my ideas and everything thanks a lot